All right, y'all. Welcome to Healthcare Digital Marketing and the Healthy Funnel Podcast. We got a super special guest here coming on with us. And uh, Will and I are so excited. We don't get, we don't get to do like two-on-one interviews like this very often, Will. But this one was so special, we had to make this happen with both of us. And uh, I, we're about to uncover one of the best kept secrets in the PT business growth space. I, I don't know if any of you um, have, have been feeling lately like, oh man, I'm, I'm starting my business. I just need to figure out how to get new patients. Mm -hmm. And you're coming here into healthcare digital marketing to figure out how do I get more patients? How do I attract them? Uh, how do I use Facebook? How do I use Google? How do I use Instagram? Which I know a lot of you are coming to us with. But what we're about to reveal today might fundamentally reframe how you're thinking about your business. And as Will and I have watched our special guest today that we're bringing on and how he trains business owners to become leaders in their business, uh, it has, it's just totally blown my mind. Uh, we've gotten so much more clear on how we treat our own customers just as a result of one short conversation that we had with our guest. And I'm really, really excited to bring him on. Will, let's talk about who our special guest is today and, uh, and, and give a brief intro to why this guy's so amazing. Yeah, well, we have uh, John Davey, the owner and founder of Physio Business Growth, a PT clinic owner himself uh, based out of New Zealand, someone who we have built a really strong friendship and relationship with. And John, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time to, to join us tonight. Thanks, man. Absolute pleasure. Yeah. You and I, my morning, right? It's your morning. <laughs> Bring it's, it on. Uh, John is, John is uh, currently in Australia where he's based out of. And uh, John, I just, do you mind if we start with a little bit of background? I know some people might have heard you on the Nobody's Podcast before, uh, but if someone's listening and they're like, I haven't heard of John before, I haven't seen John before, do you mind just giving a, a brief summary of your history in the cool. physio world? Sure. Well, I start out as a physiotherapist. I, I don't treat anymore. Um, I don't own a, a practice anymore. Um, I still would be, but I have uh, a form of arthritis. And so I actually sold my practice because I couldn't treat. I love being a physio. Absolutely loved it. And so after I'd sold my practice, I sort of fell into being a business coach for a number of practices. And, uh, it, it, it was interesting because I really started to enjoy it and I loved seeing people make some changes. But I guess when my story started, it was a wee bit different because I started working straight out of physio school for New Zealand's Olympic physio. And uh, after 12 months, I went and saw my dad and my dad was my mentor. And I said, hey, dad, I want to get out and set up my own business. And he said, great, let's go and look at buying a practice or setting one up from scratch. And I went, whoa, hold on here. I didn't explain myself, man. I said, I want to learn to be a painter and paper hanger like you. I want to get out of this physio business. He goes, what are you talking about, man? I go, dad, physios, they work their butts off. They don't have holidays like you. They don't have a holiday house like you. They never spend time with their family. Mm -hmm. They are just working flat out all the time and they don't make the income you make. So I don't want to have that as a long-term solution. And dad was really wise. He said, John, I was playing water polo at that stage and I was traveling around the world at different international water polo tournaments for uh, New Zealand. He said, as you travel around the world, spend a week at every tour, go and study what the best practices are doing. At the end of that time, we'll put a business plan together. If that business plan doesn't allow us to reach the lifestyle that you want, come and take over my business. And so I'm going, thumbs up, man. I'm on a win-win. <laughs> so <laughs> we started to to introduce ourselves to these top practices around the world. And I'll tell you what was amazing. They were really open. The big practices were really open from someone from a different country coming in and studying what they're doing. The smaller practices were closed, right? Like, man, you know, this is my secret. But anyway, after 12 months, we put a business plan together and we said, well, I think we can work this. Three years later, we were twice as big as New Zealand's next biggest practice. Within five years, we were twice as big as New Zealand or Australia's next biggest practice. And I'll never forget my, my, my dad. We were, we were walking out of, uh, of some place and, and someone said, oh, so John's the, the physio in the family. And dad turns around to this bloke and said, no, 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 John's the businessman. Mm. Pause, who happens to be a physio. And I think that's the difference. Mm. We started out with a business in mind 
rather than start it out with, oh, I'm a physio, man, I'm going to set out my own. Now I've got to get all these patients in the door. And I have seen and I've worked with so many business owners, guys, that it's really sad because they're really good clinicians, but they haven't got their business fundamentals in place. And so, you know, they're living a, a life of torment where they know they should be rocking and rolling here. You know, they should be making this work, but they just can't make it work. And it really comes down to they don't have the business acumen. And I am a big fan of, of Brené Brown, and, and she talks about shame, that, that people are really intelligent and they're really clever like physios are, but we're not taught in business acumen. And so we feel a bit of shame about, I should know this, but I don't. Mm. Well, it's okay. We're just not taught in it. Once we're taught in it, man, we can rock and roll. Because this business can be one of the most rewarding professions to be in or can be one of the most frustrating. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. John, I, I think what's really interesting, I, I'd actually forgotten your, your back, uh, the backstory of why you shifted into business coaching, because I think, I think there is a fear of, um, it, maybe not universally, but I've certainly heard plenty of people in my time um, say that they're worried their body won't last forever. Their body won't be able to keep up with the physical demands of a physical therapy, whether that's even being a manual therapist by trade or uh, even just demonstrating exercises forever. And to hear your story, I think is one that is a fear turned into reality for some people. And I, I think it's, it's really interesting that you bring that up. What was your initial, when you were, when you were starting out going into this business, were you thinking that, Hey, at some point, maybe my body won't be able to hold up or was that not even a thought on your mind? Not even a distant, I, I thought I was invincible, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, you were an Olympic athlete. You had been doing all this crazy training, right? You were, yep. okay. Which I yeah, think so is also interesting. It came as a shock. You mm. know, I, I work with a lot of uh, older clinicians now, like in their fifties and their bodies are starting to pack up. Mm. And, and, and really a lot of these guys, you know, they don't actually own a business. They've been in business for 30 years, but they've really been in business for one year. They've just done it 30 times. Mm. Wow. And, and so, you know, what is a business? A business should be, you should start with the end in mind. And that is have a business that operates independently from you needing to be there. That still delivers outstanding service at every patient touch point and produces a consistently growing profit every quarter. That should be the end goal. If you don't start out like that, you end up in turmoil, being all things to all people, you know? And so, yeah. Which I think is, uh, Alex actually had a, uh, John, I don't know if you saw, Alex actually had a post on his personal profile recently that hit home, which was, what is the number one point of, of having a business? And it was, it was awesome to see the range of responses, which, Alex probably remembers far better than I do all of them, but I remember being like, wow, there's just so many different ideas and thoughts of, of what that should be. Um, I want to take a, a second real quick for everyone who's joining on. We have 10 plus people on here now. Thank you for hopping on. Michelle, thanks for hopping on. If you're watching this, whether live or replay, let us know. If you're on here live, comment live. If you're watching this on the replay, comment replay. Uh, we'd love to know. We'd just love to know if you're here so we can, we can bounce ideas back and forth. If you have questions for John, we're going to do some time for Q&A later. Um, Alex, I'm curious on your thoughts of that because you had this post that had tons of comments, right, of what a business should be about as we're going to dive into this with John, kind of what your takeaways were. Yeah, it's been really interesting, John, because I have seen the same thing. First of all, Will and I saw it in ourselves as we branched off into, you know, we, we, were, we started off in the online space as physios, as PTs, feeling like, hey, uh, we, we understood marketing, certainly understanding how to do the thing will make us good business owners. And it's really interesting. Every few months, we get a smack in the face that reminds us that we need to increase our business knowledge and that just being good at a thing does not make you a good business owner. In fact, far from it usually, uh, which is really interesting. I think as, as PTs, as physios, we get so confident in our ability to help people and, and we get so good at it, honestly, with, with the clinical training that we have that sometimes that actually works us into a corner in our businesses. I'm curious for you, what do you see? If, uh, you alluded to this a little bit. 
when we, when somebody comes to you and says, I, I want to have a business or maybe I have a business, how are you looking at whether or not that business is quote unquote successful? How do you measure success in a business is ultimately what I'm getting at as you're going in and looking at all of these different practices. Yeah. Man, I tell you, that's a really good question. And I might just diverge a bit on that. <clears throat> I think one thing to ask about it, I've worked with some clinicians who are absolutely world-class, mm -hmm. stunning clinicians, terrible business owners, mm -hmm. terrible business owners. And I've also worked with a couple of guys that were probably the worst clinicians that the world's ever produced. <laughs> And I'm probably being kind on them. However, they had this business that absolutely rocked and rolled because they started out to be business owners mm -hmm. as compared to being clinicians that owned a job. And most people, in, they, they start out in business and they end up owning a job. And they've got this lousy boss because the boss doesn't pay them overtime. The boss doesn't pay them holiday time, doesn't pay them sick time. If they don't turn up to work, they don't get paid. And so, you know, they end up thinking, I've got to do more of this. Well, more of what? More of this insanity. And so, you know, what is a successful business? I think it's, it's depending on why you've got into business in the first place. Is it to have full autonomy? But if you're going to have autonomy, uh, I'm going to swear here. And this is a, a swear word that's used right throughout the physio world. I'm going to talk about money. You know, it's like, mm. Mm. if we're in private practice, we've got to make money. The end of it. And some people go, oh, I just need to make this much because we're brought up to work in hospitals. You know, most of our training is about working in hospitals, working all these different uh, aspects. And nobody really trains us how to be a private practitioner. And a private practitioner is, is you know, about making money. And so what is a successful business? One of the things that I do when I start working with a business is we do a business diagnostic. And it is, it, I, I'm really against saying, here's business advice. Everyone needs to follow the same business advice because different people have got different skills, different aspirations, you know, different things going in in their lives. And they could be really good at one thing, but not at the other. Mm -hmm. So we do a business diagnostic. And what we do is we look at, just like you do with low back pain. If someone comes in with low back pain, you don't go, oh man, I've got your answer. Jump on the bed here and you start treating them. You do a subjective assessment, an objective assessment, special tests. We do the same thing. We do a, a, a subjective assessment. We ask your team what they think about different aspects of, of, of their perception of how your business is. We do an objective assessment. We look at what we think are the, the eight important factors of building a business leadership, team culture, marketing, KPIs, um, what is your clinical outcomes that you're looking for, performance coaching, practice management, and a concierge patient-centered approach. We work out what you're good at and what you're not good at, and then put a list of priorities to allow you to start building with certainty. Because there are, look guys, there are so many things out there for people to do that people go, I need to go and do this social media marketing. I need to do this type of marketing. I need to look at my KPIs over here. Man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really get on my staff and make sure, you've gotta have it in order. Uh, unless you know what to do in the right order, you get lost. Mm -hmm. And so I don't believe that you can actually get that order in place, the same order for everyone, unless you've done a diagnostic on your business. Mm. That, so what is a successful business? It's different things for different folks. Hmm. And uh, let me give you this example. I never wanted to work as a business coach with single practice owners. The reason being is that they tend to be a single practice owner for a reason. And they lack leadership. And, and most people that lack leadership aren't open to other ideas. They tend to be really closed that I've got all the answers. And that's why they're small. However, I found that physios are quite different. Physios are open, otherwise we would be really stymied. And so I was, um, for a favor, I looked after this lady who was a single practitioner. She'd been a single practitioner for 10 years. And she said, John, I'm sick and tired of this. 
my body's wearing out and I, I know that I don't have the answers. And she said, for the next six months, we'll just do what you tell me to do. So we did this business diagnostic and we started with an end in mind. Um, today she employs nine full-time staff and she doesn't um, operate as a clinician anymore. She only works when she does. And it's been the most rewarding thing I think I've ever done compared to working with other big businesses. Mm. Because there are so many good physios out there that really want to make a change, but they just don't know what to do. So what is success? It's different things for different people. I don't know if I've answered that. Yeah. No, go ahead, Alex. Yeah. No, I just, I love looking at your principled base approach to how you grow a business. It's not, hey, what happens to be really attractive or what sounds fun or what sounds, um, you, you know, what marketing message most resonates with you and that's the thing that you go after. I think it's, it's really difficult for Will and I who, our business is based on, we're a consulting based, a teaching based business where we help people implement, um, implement new ideas into their businesses. And it's so hard as, as a coach sometimes seeing they'll buy a program and then they'll buy another program and another program and another. And suddenly we have this online overwhelm. And I'm really curious, those of you who are on here right now, have you ever noticed that in yourself? Have you noticed yourself being in this just like hungry, hungry learning mode where you go by Will and Alex's course and then you'll go by someone else's course and then someone else's and someone else's and you find yourself with 30 different programs and unable to implement any of them meaningfully or maybe even worse, unable to identify which of them you need right now in your business, which is the ultimate disaster, right? And that's what I think you're saying, John, is, hey, look, let's, let's go dive into your business and really decide what it is that we need to be focused on right now. What is it that makes sense right now? And if you're someone who's, who's watching this right now and you've caught yourself in that overwhelm, I, I want you to ask yourself why. Why is it that, that you allow yourself to, to get into that? John, why do you see business owners getting into this overwhelm mode and staying stuck there so long? <clears throat> I think it all comes down to, you know, this lack of business acumen and not knowing, not having a game plan, not having an end point. What's the end point in the first place? And so a, a lot of, a lot of physios, they start out on their own and then they employ other staff and they go, I've now got a business. I'm employing other staff. Look, the majority of people don't employ staff. They rent a room. Hmm. So they get a staff member to come in and they say, you're my staff member but they work in a room independently and they treat with full autonomy how they want. And it could be quite, quite different to what the principal or the owner's philosophy is. And so now what you have is this eclectic mix of different treatment styles. And we go, oh, we're professionals. We work to our own autonomy. You know, but that's not a business. That's renting rooms. What is a business is the business owner needs the leadership to say, this is what I stand for. This is my philosophy. This is what we're going to deliver at every patient touch point. I'm not talking about a menu, but I'm talking about a, a, a philosophy of treatment and then training the team to be able to operate in the same mechanism. So if you have um, Auntie Joseph, Auntie Joseph comes in and, and she's being treated by Bob. Well, and, and Bob does one style of treatment. Well, she comes back six months later and she's getting Helen treating her. And Helen treats totally different. Well, she's confused now. Well, why would she come back to this practice? So I think we've got to start out with the end in mind. It starts with leadership. And I can't stress this enough. When I went and diagnosed, when I went and, and analyzed a whole bunch of elite practices around the world, the one thing that stood out was great leadership in every one of those practices. Yeah. And you need to take your business by, by the horns and go, hey, I'm the leader in this business. This is what my business stands for. And then it's about creating a whole culture around what your philosophy is. And, and culture is given a lot of lip service, yeah. you know, but people don't know how to change it. And I think it's really important that culture and leadership are the two most defining things that will determine your long-term success. And, and you can study long and hard about it and you, and you can't run out of things to do. You know, leadership, personal leadership is a lot. And look, I'll shortcut this. 
I'm a big believer in John Wooden's philosophy from UCLA basketball, you know, the, the, the pyramid of success. The two things he has in the cornerstones are enthusiasm and industriousness. We've got to work hard with enthusiasm. And I think we get so overwhelmed and tired, we stop being enthusiastic. And then we stop being industrious. So I think we've got to have work, we've got to work hard, enthusiasm, but we've got to be open and coachable. And if we're closed minded, we get stuck. So we've got to be open to new ideas and going, I don't know it all, because if I knew it all, I'd have the business that I want. Man, there's, there's a lot to unpack, John, and, and a lot of that in the sense that we've got, we, you bring up some great points of, of not just a culture, but, but also dealing with our own, our own personal issues, right? Like it's hard to define a culture when you don't have things right with yourself. Uh, if you're going to be the one setting that, that culture. And I think what you're, what we're talking about is so interesting at this point in time, because Alex and I, as of two years ago, started a business, which we have worked ourselves into having jobs in our business, right? That's where we're currently at in our business. And it's really interesting to be talking because we're looking at how do we then get out of, uh, I shouldn't say get out of, how do we then transition to actually creating a culture, creating a, a team, a philosophy. And even though we don't plan to have a physical therapy business anytime soon, it's the principles that are the same, right? It's, it's still the same principles of leading a group of people I'd really love to know if anyone's listening right now or on the replay, do you feel like if you've bro branched out on your own and you're working for yourself right now, do you feel like you have, are you own a job for yourself? That you don't own a business, you actually own your own job. I would love to know uh, if you're Alex and I, safe to say, being vulnerable, we own our own jobs right now, which is great. There's freedom in that, but there's also a big gap that we want to get to, which is to build a team, build a culture, and that does not completely revolve around us. And John, I think knowing our group of people, there are a lot who are working for themselves now who have made the leap. They are, uh, they are owning their own job and probably doing quite well at it. What, what are the, the necessary steps or maybe just things to be thinking about to go from that position, kind of where Alex and I are, this is sort of a selfish question, to looking at how do you, how do you then have that insight or, uh, you know, what's necessary to move into true business ownership rather than job ownership? Yeah. yeah. If I can reflect back on this lady that's gone from one to seven, what, mm -hmm. from being a solo practitioner to having seven people work for her. And, uh, and I've got to admit, the seven that work for her, she believes that actually do a better job than what she did. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason being is most people go, their business should be on this this nice easy growth to come through um and i believe that the very first thing is actually take a take a step back and go what's my end point and when we took a step back with this lady her name's pam um the first thing we did is said what's your end point and she goes well i need to employ staff so if you're going to employ staff what do you want them to deliver and i want them to deliver what i deliver okay let's document it Let's document what is it that she wants them to deliver. And then what we did is we took the first person on, we trained them. And these are the things that we want you to deliver. Now, during that process, there was actually a, a decrease in revenue generation because she took time out of her treatment time to actually document and put in place all the foundations. And she was, um, she was going, John, is this wise? And it's just like, hey, if you don't take the time to get your foundations in place, you can never grow. You're just always hectic. So what we did is, is, is we took this time out, we identified, because she had a niche business, it was a vestibular business, and um, we documented, we trained one person in it. And then we looked at that training and go, okay, what do we need to refine from how we trained her, her expectations, what she delivers at every step. And she has the aut autonomy to work within this framework she can work outside of it if it's good clinical reasoning. So there's always clinical reasoning was the foundation. It wasn't a, a menu of how to operate. It was based on foundations. So we refined it and then we went and created a marketing strategy with a marketing calendar that could become automated rather than let's be reactive and we need more patients, let's react to the market, let's create something. So again, it took time out of your diary to do that. 
we put that in place and it, it worked for her. So she got an increase in patient numbers and she had this new person working for it. And then from that, we went and employed another one. We went, you know, this marketing works, doesn't it? Yeah, okay, let's just do more of it. And so we just used that philosophy going forward. But it started with taking a step back and going, what is it that I believe? And what does I want the rest of my team that I'm going to bring on, even if they're not here right now? What do I want them to believe in? What do I want them to deliver at every step? Hmm. And then take it from there. John, you mentioned right before we got on, you talked about how a lot of times people will go through that process and think that first thing I need is more patience. And you said oftentimes that's actually not the case. Why do you say that? Yeah, man. Well, a lot of people go, look, I've got staff. I, I need more patients coming in. But if they don't know what their staff are doing, their staff could be doing a, a job which is quite different to what they're doing. And so they could, have, they could have people coming in and receiving a really lousy service. And so if you want more of that, you're going to end up with a catastrophe. And, and I see so many times that we've got one really clinic, one strong clinical person and they're so strong clinically that they have more people than not to do with. And so they employ staff and they don't give staff much training. And they say, look, your job is to build up your list, but they don't have the skills to build up the list. And so they take the overflow and that overflow starts getting treated with their philosophy, with their skill set. Now, if their skill set's not as good as the, as the primary person, those patients leave with a real poor impression of this overall business. Now, what we, what we really should be doing is going, here's my skill sets. I'm going to teach the next person these skill sets. Then I'm going to drive more patients into the business. Because mm -hmm. if you get it back to front, it actually ends up being a negative. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm working with a, a chap right now in the US who's got a, a number of uh, staff that work for him. Man, and they all treat differently. We just look at their KPIs, for example, and they're all over the place. And when we interviewed the staff, they go, what do you love about being here? I love the autonomy that I can be who I want to be. So what he really has is he has a room rental business based on his overflow from his good reputation. But his good reputation is slowly being in the way because of these other people that are working in the business. So do we need more people or do we need to look after them better? Or do I need to look after my staff better and train them? Mm. I need to do that. Do I need, first of all, how do I look after my staff? Do I need different leadership skills? And, and I, I like, I don't know if you guys have ever worked with the Jahari window. It, 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 it's a philosophy of understanding that came out of UCLA, two sports psychologists. And they said that you have a window which is put into four frames. And down this side of the window, it, all the things that you know about yourself, over this side, all the things you don't know about yourself. Over here are the things that people know about you and people don't know about you. So you've got common knowledge. I'm John, I'm married to Mary, I'm a physio. Then we've got our secrets, things that I know but no one else knows. And then over one side, we have our potential, things that I don't know about myself and other people don't. And then I have my blind spots, people, things that I don't know about myself but other people do. And when we ask physios what's the most important component, most people, whether it's sport or physios, they go, my potential. But the most important component is your blind spots, first of all. What is it that other people can see that you're not doing that you need to be doing? And we've all got blind spots, except for my wife, evidently. Um, we've all got blind spots that we should be thinking about. And uh, so who tells us about our blind spots? Someone that we really appreciate, someone that has our best interests at heart, and is prepared to look at us straight up and down and go, we need to fix these first of all. Mm -hmm. John, I guess, so one, one question that I have from that is, what if someone is averse to thinking they even have blind spots? How do we, how do we help them with that? I guess to me, it's a, working with so many people now, right? There's a, a, uh, 
I, I become more and more convinced that the only thing that holds us back is, is really understanding ourselves more and more and more and, 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 and really diving in and taking ownership of the things that I don't know and am, am not good enough at. How do, you, um, wow. how do you help someone who you see or meet or, or can you, this is a philosophy question, leadership question more than anything of someone who, because um, I think this is including myself, for example, at times when, no, 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 I think I got it figured out. I think I have it figured out. And, and, and they're probably not even open to my blind spots being pointed out to me. If, if someone's in that way, or maybe they have staff that way, how do you help someone to be open-minded to that, 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 or is it a timing thing? I don't even know where I'm going with this question. It just got me fascinated. How do we, how do we help someone to see what they might not be able to see, right? Like, how do we help them to know that that's there? Well, that, that, that's a great question because it's not only for you personally, but if you grow a business, some of your staff are going to be in that position right. and, and getting them through. One of the first things we always do is we, always, we have this leadership program that we run with our people and it's sort of a, accumulation. There was half a dozen of us got together who have done a lot of leadership work in business and sport. And we chin wagged for about four weeks over what were the key things we want an elite sports coach or an elite person in business to have. And we created this leadership program. And if I bring it down to a, a real condensed version, if you're not open to having blind spots, it really means that you don't fit into a leadership position period. Hmm. Okay. You shouldn't be in business. Go and work in a hospital. So, man, how's that for just take that by the throat, man? <laughs> no, that's, yeah, you that's know, a... it, it, my, my dad calls them know it alls. He said, know it alls are really dangerous. Mm -hmm. And, and well, it's the like business, their businesses at the end of the day is going to reflect it, right? You, you'll a, 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 absolutely. And, and so I, I talk about, I talk about your your sphere of influence is going to determine how successful you are. So imagine you've got this sphere and this sphere of influence is based on your wisdom and wisdom is what you know and what you act on. So if you know something, you don't act on it. There's no wisdom. Your sphere is as big. You want your sphere to be as big as possible. And people want to break through to all the things they don't know. They don't know. And just really make this massive wisdom sphere out there and make an impact. However, to break through the outer shell, Everybody knows there's some things they should be doing, but they're not doing. Everybody's in that category. And you've got to start with the little wins. Start breaking through the little things that you know you should be doing that you're not doing to allow yourself to expand as a human being. And, you know, I, I know one of them that is really hard for many, many people is to look really blatantly at where they are right now in their business and life and going, Am I where I want to be? Because if I knew how to get to where I want to be, I'd already be there. So therefore, there's some things I'm not doing, all these things that I am doing, I need to stop doing to help me along the way. And so when we can open up that everyone's got blind spots and they're open to blind spots, it really, it helps speed up the process. And so there's, a, so I'm, I'm a big rugby follower, rugby union follower, you know, I'm a Kiwi, the All Blacks, um, we didn't win the World Cup. South Africa won that, and they were fantastic. But uh, the, the All Blacks have a philosophy of better men make better All Blacks. It's not about better rugby players make better All Blacks. It's better men. So it's, it's a rounded philosophy. So I started to think about that, about what makes the ideal physio, what makes the ideal team player for physio. And we came up with this mantra We've used it for about three years now, and I'm really open if someone has a better mantra. But it, it's this. The ideal physio is open and coachable with an attitude of gratitude as they pursue excellence. So open and coachable with an attitude of gratitude. That's really applicable. So it's just like when someone says, hey, Will, you know, have you considered doing this? I think you're missing this. Instead of going, man, you're judging me. Or it's like, Hey, thanks for caring enough for pointing this out. That now means that whoever's giving you advice is going to keep giving you advice 
but it means that you're in a position to go, oh, geez, I, did, I, I missed that totally. Yeah. So, you know, open and coachable with an attitude of gratitude is like the mantra we use for the ideal physio. And as I said, I'm really open if someone has a better one, you know, but um, we find it really hits the key. Okay, so John, as, as we're wrapping up, I want to ask you, where do you think the highest return on attention is for a business owner who has, let's say they've started a practice, maybe they have some staff, maybe they don't. Where do you feel like they should be focusing their attention right now? Is it, uh, this is, I know that this is such a general question because it comes down to specifics, but is it, hey, do I need to be looking at KPIs? Hey, do I need to be looking at, um, at staffing and training? Do I need to be looking? How do we decide where we should be spending our attention? I know that the best answer is, hey, we need to be hiring someone who can help us see the blind spots, who can honestly say that to us. Where do you feel like for early business owners, their highest return on attention is? Is it in business principles? Is it in personal development? Where do you see this being? Being a coach yourself, where do you see that most people need to make the earliest changes for their businesses? There's a can of worms for you. I, I know. So, so I guess the real question is, should someone be, be focusing all in on their business? Should someone be focusing on themselves and the changes that they need to make personally? How do you see that? What's your philosophy there? I believe the very first thing should be your end point. What's your end game? What do you want to develop at the end? You know, it's, it's like when I, you know, years ago when I said to my dad, and so my dad was a painter, you know, painted, out, painted houses. He had a good business though. And he said, John, we're going to start with the business plan. Then what's your end point? What do you want to end up with? What's the end that you want to be at? Not like how, how much is your business worth? How much is it making? What are you going to deliver to your customers? What are you going to deliver to your patients? And I think we've got to spend time to do that rather than go, hey, look, I'm, I'm going to mold that out as I come. Start with, am I going to end up giving a fabulous service to everybody that comes through the door? Every patient touch point is going to receive a fabulous service. Am I going to be focused on gold standard services here? Am I going to focus on, on, on what, what is it I'm after? Start with that in mind because we've broken down that there are eight components to an elite practice. But you know what? It, it's irrelevant what they are unless you know where you want to end up down the track. Not just monetary wise, but what type of service delivery do you want to have? Did that answer that? Yeah, I, 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 it does for me. And I, I think, John, you, you it, it's one of those things that's so simple, but not easy to do. Right. It's so, it's so simple, but it's not easy to do. It's very, very uh, hard to do. And, and I guess I would ask you, how many times do you talk with people? Cause I think I'm, I'm now just thinking about myself and reflecting who have, who could tell you, Oh, I have an endpoint of what I'd want. And you hear it and go, I don't think you've thought that hard about it, young man, or you haven't thought about it really hard enough. Or cause I, I think a lot of us live in this idea of, yeah, I have an idea of what it is. And, and, and I, and I do think it's, it's, simple, but it's hard to truly know what that endpoint is. If someone is, I guess, do you find people just not even thinking big enough or, or deep enough into what they want? Is that partially a problem or not? Well, it's a real big problem. Um, but I, I reckon that I believe that the key problem right now with the majority of our profession is that we are so flat out being flat out. Hmm. We get overwhelmed with what to do next. And so we're looking for the next little thing that'll just, oh, maybe if I do this, it'll give me a reprieve. Maybe if we'll do this, it'll just help me get to the next level. And then I can sort it out. And, and my recommendation is stop. Take a breather. Have a real clear mind and go, what is it that I want to produce in the long run? What do I want to be known for? Do I have an exit strategy? And then start putting it in place. And look, let it be moldable but at least start out with an end in mind. Mm. It's like, you know, my favorite athlete of all, of all time, Michael Phelps. I, I can assure you, he, he didn't stand on the podium at the Olympics and go, gee, gee I, was, I was just out for a swim and look what happened. You know, <laughs> totally planned out and get there. 
we need to take a, a leaf out of some of these, these uh, different experiences and go, where do I want to end up? What do I want to deliver? What do I want to be known for? Start with that in mind. What's, what's absolutely mind boggling to me is, is you say that and it makes so much sense to me. And I view myself when I was a clinician, I would have the exact same approach to talk to a patient of saying, oh, do you really think, I just saw an, an advertisement yesterday for Dr. Ho, uh, drhohelps.com. It is a TENS unit. It's a style of TENS unit or a, 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 a I don't know what we'd call it, electrical stimulation unit, right? Just pads on the back and just, j -j 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 -j. the amount of people who are like, I could just get that thing. My back pain's gone. But no, I just need that one thing, right? And you know, with all of your knowledge, like really, 17 years of back pain, that one thing is what's been missing. If we just had that one new little, in, you know, that new little stimulus, it would all go away. We would get the reprieve, just like you were talking about, just processing, like, wow, how many of us would sit here and have the same conversation to our patients, but aren't willing to have it with ourselves about our own businesses? And uh, if you're interested, I looked up, there's an affiliate relationship with Dr. Ho, if anyone's out there and wants to start pushing, uh, you know, your back spasm machines just kidding please don't do that unless you really try out but uh it's just fascinating i, I didn't even really have a, a question on top of that i just thought it was i'm just thinking of how i would never say that to a patient like yeah you, you know if you just do this thing you'll get the reprieve that you need right now at all and then then we'll really get to it right like no we've got to we've got to take a step back right do i want to reduce symptoms right away yes if i can but ultimately we have to have a game plan it can't be just Hey, we'll temporarily get it down and, and, and we'll be good. So I just thank you for that, that, uh, perspective, John, it really, really helped me clarify that. Um, Alex, any other questions? I, I sorry, just took yeah, over. I just, I just want to, no, I just want to ask, we've had a couple questions come in about people who are very, very early on in their business. Uh, someone asked specifically, what, what about for low capital business owners? I would ask you, John, what's your mindset? And again, this, I know the answer is, hey, figure out what at the end of the game, how does, how does someone grow from a very, very startup practice? Now, let's say they have their end in mind. They know the kind of customer experience they want to create. They know the kind of maybe even a hint of the kind of culture they want to create for themselves. How do you go from being a solo practitioner to giving yourself permission to hire people? How do we overcome that? I need to control it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, again, I'll come right the way back. Is if you've defined what your end goal is, part of that end goal is I'm going to hire someone who's going to follow my principles. Have you documented down? Have you got guidelines in place? This is how we look after people that come through the door at my practice. First things to do. Then you need to train your staff up on that before you actually release them out to the world. Too many people go, I'm going to employ someone, man, I'm so worried about paying their wage. I'm so worried. Are they going to look after the patients well enough that I, I, I can't take time out of my time to educate them because it's going to affect my income. We've got to stop right there, take a breath and go, I'm going to deliver a business here. I'm not going to deliver a, a, a haphazard approach to employing people and hoping they do a good job because hope and luck are really poor strategies when it comes to business success. Take time, define what it is you want and then employ staff and train them. And, and sure, does that mean that you'll take a hit in your back pocket in those initial few weeks while you're employing them? Yes, it does. Is there a way around that? No, there's not. Uh, the only other alternative is a haphazard approach and hope that things work out. And again, hope, poor strategy at business success. Wow. John, I, I know that you have, you've created a, essentially a, an entire course for people to start going through a, a series of content that drives them towards being ultimately a leader in their clinic, but drives them towards understanding their business at the levels that you're talking about right now. Can you tell us about that course and how someone can get access to it? Because you've, you've created cool. something that's essentially a free course for people that is ridiculously 
underpriced, <laughs> seeing that it's free. Tell us about that and what is the course? How do people get access to it? Okay, so look, uh, I'll send you the link to the course. Sounds good. Um, it's it, it's, it's a called Complimentary Kickstart and it's basically to help kickstart you into getting the business acumen. Because I believe physio is one of the most, physio and physical therapy, one of the most rewarding professions to be involved with. We make an impact on people's lives. We change family dynamics. And look, we do immeasurable good for communities, but we're not remunerated well enough. And the reason being is we don't have that business acumen. So we created a, a totally free course looking at the eight main components of what's required with every elite high performing practice. And uh, we're throwing this out there for free. Why? Well, I just believe that we've got this great profession and, and this is a, a way of, of me leaving a bit of a legacy and going, here are some components that if you start studying, you at least have the foundations to understand what it is that you need to put in your business to make an impact in, in, in a nutshell. And, I, and I've had some other people go say, Hey, hey what's the end point here? Well, well there is no end point. It, it's a totally free program. It's out there for people to absorb and use any way that they want, but it's all about creating the business acumen to have a thriving, prosperous private practice. And at the end of the day, if I know a whole bunch of people are achieving that for our profession, you know, I'm a happy man. I love it. If you're watching this right now and you would like access to the free course, uh, just go ahead and comment John. If you want to comment John in the comments, we will get you the link. I just want to say that Alex and I don't, uh, we don't invite many people on for interviews. In fact, we haven't even been on a lot lately as we've been focusing on, on our own product and, and, and launch code. And John offered to do this for our group. And uh, I just want to say we've had the honor of getting to uh, work with John over uh, the last six months to a year now, I, I want to say it's been it's been close to that, and I've yet to find someone, very few people, that match John with generosity, kindness, all tied in with incredible business acumen. John, we didn't even talk about your own businesses or how you've helped so many other businesses grow. We've just been getting into leadership. You're just gonna have to take on our word. John has been absolutely absolutely helping so many people grow their physio businesses. And I know you might be thinking, well, John's in Australia, New Zealand. No, the business of principles apply everywhere, all over the world. And what John does uh, is absolutely amazing. Alex, is it safe to say that John has been one of, one of the most people we've looked up to the most over the last year since, since meeting him? Yeah, he actually really played a role. And John, you, you maybe don't know this, but from many of the interactions that we had uh, as we started looking at how do we create really good client experiences at each of the different touch points along a client's journey progressing through our digital programs. When we saw, we, we got kind of a behind the curtain peek at what John does um, with clinic owners and, and the, the roadmaps that he helps them create. And Will and I decided, oh man, we need to create a roadmap for what success looks like for someone. And it was a really big lesson to me that we can't just, like John says, put something out there and hope that somebody gets the results from it. We need to to be strategic in how we plan somebody's journey through being one of our clients. And that's actually what resulted in launch code for Will and I, as we looked at, great, what is the client journey? What is the success path as we're working with people one-on-one, -on -one, which has become now our core program. And so John, we owe a lot of that to you. And it was simply in just like merely getting a glimpse of your coaching materials for people. And, and some of it I'm sure is in this free program as well. In fact, I know it is because I've seen oh. some of the inside of it. Guys, real quick before that, sorry, Alex, to interrupt. I just have to say on that point, we got to look in the inside of this. John sent it to me and I originally go, I think he sent me the wrong thing. I think this is the full like master level course. And so I, I, I double checked and, and with one of John's uh, uh, business partners and he's like, no, yeah, that's the free one. I was like, wow, that's insane. It, absolutely blew me away. So I just want to say right now, if you're like even, I mean, obviously it's free, you should take advantage of it, but I'll just say like, it was, I, I was absolutely blown away by what John delivers in this. It's, it's incredible. Sorry, Alex. So just on that note. No, I, I, I just want to wholeheartedly endorse 
um, what John has done for us without really even intending to. <laughs> and um, just what you said, John, about this, the circle of influence, the people that you're around in increasing your wisdom by increasing your knowledge and then you acting on it. I really, really want to encourage those who have just commented, John, that, that we'll send the link out to for this. Please don't take the things that you learned from this and think, wow, this is great. I'll add it to my knowledge bank. Please act on the things that he's showing because they are principles that create for you the business that you're all pushing for so hard. But if you don't have the business that you want right now, then I would really, really encourage you to dig deep into the principles that John teaches and apply them in your business. As Will and I have done this, it's made a big impact in how we approached our teaching. And um, I just want to thank you, John, for the impact that you've had on Will and I in the short time that we've known you. It's, it's been really cool. And um, I just, I really respect the integrity with which John approaches his business. And that's why Will and I wanted to bring him on. We, we bring very few people in front of our audience. We, we, we guard you guys a lot. We just want you to know that because we really respect you. And like we talked about earlier, we don't want you going in a million directions with your business. And so this is an invitation to get um, some significant business growth in how you're approaching your physio business and to treat it as a business and not just being a practitioner of the thing and instead learning how to be a business owner, which is what John is offering you for free, which is just ridiculous. So John, thank you so much for coming on, for sharing your wisdom with us and for offering this to our, to our audience. Thanks man. It's been awesome. I always love getting, re getting around you guys. It's uh, you, you guys are a fresh of breath here to our community. And uh, you know, I, I think that's your members can see that and we just need to get that out to more and more people. I do believe that a rising tide lifts all ships. And so the more successful we can be in our own individual position and actually reach out and help other people be successful, the better it is for this profession. And this is a wonderful profession. We can't lie down and let other people take it over. We need to stand up and go, hey, this is great. Let's rock and roll, guys. So thanks for having me on board, guys. Love it. John, we want to say thank you. Uh, we will get the link to everyone who, who comments and I'll make another post. But John, in the meantime, if people are just interested in learning more about you, uh, they want to follow Physio Business Growth, how can they, where's the best place for them to keep up with what you're doing? Yeah, just go to physiobusinessgrowth.com. And, and probably the easiest thing. You also just launched something recently, right? That involves- Yeah, we just launched a podcast as well. And uh, the, the podcast is quite different. So we're doing a, a weekly podcast with, with people, world authorities, both within and outside our profession. <gasps> because we can learn so much more from people outside our profession and not be myopic. And, and so, you know, we've started to do this. And uh, the response by a number of, of like real world authorities to go, hey, man, yeah, look, we're happy to share. has been wonderful. And so uh, yeah, we just started, we just launched that as well. And in fact, you can, if you get the free membership, it actually has access to that. So uh, you can subscribe to that as well. And uh, it's been, we've had some great response with that um, from people all over. So, you know, we've even, I just said, we just had a bunch of people from Singapore and uh, South Africa sign up and comment and going, hey man, this is wonderful. So, you know, we're just here to share. It's great, right. thanks. And John, the, the name of the podcast, is it Physio? Business growth. Business, business growth. Okay. If you're listening, guys, if I know a ton of you out there who listen to podcasts that are on here, go check out Physio Business Growth. Uh, Alex, anything else? John, we just want to say thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We, we appreciate you being on here. If you haven't yet, comment John below. We'll send you the link as soon as, uh, as, soon as we get it so you can get access to the free course. And uh, we just, we love you, John. We so appreciate uh, the the honor that we have of being considered friends. I just love every time we get on the phone with John or on a call, it's just this like knowledge, 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 knowledge. And then Will and I are like, whoa, how do we apply what he just like inadvertently taught us? And, <laughs> um, I just love it. So thank you, John. We appreciate you. And guys, go take advantage of this. It's an incredible, incredible series of principles that'll just it's the business school that we should have had in PT school that they just didn't give to us. So go take advantage of it. John, thank you again, guys. This has been the healthcare digital marketing group and the healthy funnel podcast. Go act on the things that you learned. I want you to go review it. I sat here and I took notes the whole time. I'm going to go sit down and think about how we're actually going to implement what we just learned. Don't 
Just listen and absorb information. As John told us, go apply it. That's where we actually make the difference in our businesses and where we can ultimately make the impact that we want on people's lives. Thank you guys. We'll see you on the next one.